Hey guys, we're back here with Chris Woodbury, better known as Ripping on 44s, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, we'll be talking his uh, 2019 Road Glide. Yep. Um, but before we get into that, man, kind of give us a little bit of your story, um, kind of your background and history, kind of what you do, even like not necessarily related to motorcycles. So I'm from Toledo, Ohio. Uh, I'm actually from Grand Rapids, Ohio, but it's it's just easier to say Toledo. Most people don't know Grand Rapids. Um, and I'm an electrician up there at Jeep. Um, I have two daughters and and a wife that uh, puts up with me <laughs> spending all my money on this. So I guess uh, I guess obviously getting into the trades and obviously electrician early on, like kind of how that started, kind of like what kind of started that, like uh, that trade. And so I took that. like a, a weird route to it. Um, when I was growing up, I was kind of a sports kid, ended up playing a lot of, I play football for, um, throughout my my childhood and I played <clears throat> a few uh, years of college football. Um, so I kind of was not even in the trades at that point. Um, and then worked into working for a uh, Honda down around Columbus. Um, and then that, that just kind of worked into working for Jeep and um, I, you know, enjoy what I do and, and it's a, you know, it's a good job and, and helps provide for my family. You know, it's allows you to, Build bad <laughs> yeah, bikes like spend, this. spend too much money on this thing. <laughs> uh, I don't know about too much, but uh, I guess you mentioned football. You actually mentioned football earlier today, and I meant to ask about that. So I guess what position did you play and all that kind of deal? So I was a linebacker in college, uh, and that was I played. I played like a, it was a year, and then after that, I kind of kind of decided to go just a different route. It, it um, I kind of burned myself out. I, I think it was just not something I wanted to do anymore. Um, the, the school was was all right. It just, and I just didn't fit in, you know, it just didn't fit me. So from then on, I, I left that and that's went back home to, uh, to Toledo there and then, you know, made it work from there. There you go. All right. So from Ohio, electrician, former football player, kind of, kind of what started the whole journey with like motorcycles, like first exposure to motorcycles. And when you start like as riding initially and that kind of deal. Yeah. So like I just said, I, I kind of wasn't a, like I wasn't a dirt bike kid. Um, I liked motorcycles when I was little, but I, I, you know, my dad didn't have them until I got a little older. And uh, so I was just a sports kid. You know, my parents always, you know, I, I think I played multiple sports every year for throughout the summers, winter. And um, so as I got older, uh, my, my dad got a, a bike and him and my mom went all trips to Sturges and things like that. And uh, then a few years after that, my mom started riding. So she had her bike. My dad had a couple bikes. And then just, I don't even know, one weekend we were there and I just kind of, hey, let me take the bike out. So me and the old man went for a little ride. And uh, literally it was from then on, I was like, I was hooked. Yeah, um, yeah. I've probably been riding for since 07 probably okay. so i guess about the that's about the same time i picked up riding after college when i can actually finally like afford a bike and I yeah that's kind of about the time i picked it up um so we'll jump into that kind of like i guess not quite into your bike but kind of start that process because um you mentioned riding since 07 and you built like this killer performance bagger all these like amazing parts and you brought it together really well but I think the bigger part, biggest part, regardless of what kind of bike you have, is that the fact that you actually ride it, <laughs> and you do some legit riding on this thing. You've got was it 2019, and you've got over fifty thousand. I'm already? coming up on fifty. I'm coming almost up on 50? there. So okay. I'll probably after this little this little trip, I'll probably definitely hit fifty. Um, yeah, I, I've always liked going on trips. I definitely love coming down to Tennessee. Like yeah. that's probably one of my favorite trips to do. Um, but I, you know, when I first got my own bike. I, hell, we went on trips with my parents to uh, to Tennessee and, and things like that. But I've always just liked to ride. Like, it's just my getaway, you know? And I think it's, for anyone who's into motorcycles, I think that's how they feel, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, it just, you know, I've had, I don't even know how many bikes. And um, each one was just a little different. You know, I've never had the same bike over. And, um, but no, I, I just, I just loved riding, you know, it just, like putting the time on the seat, you know? There you go. So I guess what's some of the, obviously, so first of all, thanks for actually making the trip down to Nashville to do the interview, but that's what, like a seven, eight hour ride drive yeah, here? It's about seven hours. And yep. then if, I know, I, first time I met you was at uh, V-Twin and the Smokies, what, two years ago? Yeah. Three years ago? Yep. And so that's probably something similar. So what's some yep. of like the, I guess, 
the bigger trips you've done in terms of like that kind of deal? So I'm trying to think. It was uh, probably 2010. I made a trip to from uh, where Columbus when I was living around Columbus area. Uh, we went down to Daytona. Okay. And then from there, we went to Key West. So it was a long, I think I ended up doing 900 and almost a thousand miles stretch. <laughs> I was getting tired because it was a long week and uh, I was following the trailer on my bike and I was so tired that I thought the trailer said U-Haul, but it was just <laughs> a black trailer. You know, it was just, <laughs> but I had been on the bike for, I don't know how long. Yeah. Um, and really, I mean, if it was 2010, I hadn't been riding, you know, just a few years. Right. So that was probably my biggest, longest trip. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get out West. Um, you know, I've been to, to the camp out. So I've yeah. been out to you know, Oklahoma and Texas. Um, but I definitely want to get out West, like Colorado, Utah. Yeah. I would highly recommend it. And Colorado, Utah, Wyoming. I thought it was amazing. And the parts I've seen in Montana are insane. I want to do a lot more in Montana, but I feel like it's a completely different riding to around here in yeah. Tennessee, even though like I live here, Tennessee's awesome, especially East Tennessee, but out there, I feel like you get a lot more of like the scale of everything because here you go everywhere and there's just like trees and greenery. You can't really see that far. So it's hard to get like that scale and like almost like the epicness of like yeah. mountains and all that stuff. But you get out there and I feel like it's, it feels more wide open. I don't know. No, I definitely, I, I definitely get that. You know, where I'm, where I'm at, it's flat, right? Yeah. I mean, there's no, it, you can see forever. And, um, you know, so when we come down here to ride it, it's, we really try to take advantage of it because it's, it's boring up there. You know, you might have like two roads mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that you can rip on pretty good, but you know, it's, it's, I definitely want to get out West. I'm with you uh, getting the Utah, Idaho, all that stuff. Would, yeah. Would be awesome. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. I did highly recommend it. So obviously you do a ton of trips like long distance with like racking up that number of miles, but like from riding around with you today and ripping the trace and a couple other stuff, like you legit get on this thing and you, you ride, <laughs> you ride the shit out of it and like you're ripping it or whatever. And so you're definitely like using that performance side of it. So I guess kind of what drew you to that and kind of like actually like kind of pushing hard in the corners and just kind of riding balls out. Cause you definitely do that a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, um, I don't know, I guess it's cool to go fast straight. I mean, that's, it's cool. Um, but you know, even on when I was head bikes that, you know, weren't a performance bike, um, you know, I still like going down, you know, Southeast Ohio is kind of hilly and curvy. So, but I still like to do stuff like that and, and you know, hit them as hard as I can. And with standard height stuff, you know, you're only doing so much. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always just enjoyed kind of carving them up a little bit. And with this style of bike, it just, I felt like it fits the way I like to ride. Um, you know, it, it's, it's still fast, but you know, you're still, if you can, you know, carve and rip them corners and get pitted, you know, it's, it's yeah. a good time. Yeah. I was just thinking, thanks for letting me ride it today, but like yeah. from riding today, this thing is, it's set up right. It, you want to <laughs> ride hard when you're on this thing. Um, it's, it's on, it's on rails. You know, a lot of people say it and you know, the teach their own, but I can, this, this thing is, it's legit set up on rails. It, it's a, it's a hell of a bike. It really is. I will, <laughs> even from that couple miles I did today, I will 1000% vouch for that. <laughs> All right, so I guess let's jump into that. So, like, walk us through, like, obviously, 2019 Road Glide Special that yep. you said earlier, right? Yep. Um, so, kind of walk us through, like, kind of like high level, like what you were kind of going for, both aesthetically, but also like purpose wise. Obviously, you were going performance wise, but kind of like high level, like what you were trying to do with look, but also like set up. Yeah. Well, you know, it definitely didn't start out that way, right? Um, I tried different bars and I mean it's probably had five exhausts, three different handlebars. I've, I've tried different um, combinations and, and until I finally kind of settled on this and I'm still making tweaks but mm -hmm. um, it uh, you know I, I knew I wanted to have a taller stance because I, I like the race bike look like to me having that tall stance where you have enough lean and, and ground clearance um, so you can you know curve and get in the curves and things like that. Um, so that was kind of my main priority. I wanted to have good suspension, taller stand, so I wanted to lift it, and definitely brakes. You know, those are those are to me a, a staple of a, of a performance bike. You know, mm -hmm. um, so if you can have good suspension, good brakes, and and you know, and then you have you know, you can go into the the bars and ergonomics or or I don't even know. Yeah, our ergonomics is the ergonomics right of the bike. You know, between your seat, the bars. I mean, I know they say that's your starter kit, right? But 
there's a lot to it. The um, right seating position, I mean, is everything. Yeah, I mean, especially absolutely. like you're using like race bikes and like setting up like a race bikes. Like those guys spend tons of time just like working on like their seating position, their like hand position, and yeah. all that. Oh, yeah. Like it's it's huge. Like from sitting on the other day, this bike you want to rip when you're on this bike. Like it just puts you in that position. So yeah, like, that's that's why it, like it's you know I've changed a few things here and there, but. You know, you can't go too crazy because, you know, if you did like race bike setup where your, you know, your hands are on the fairing, then you're lowering the fairing and, you know, you may lose some wind protection or whatever you're into, but it's, uh, you still got to trip it too. So you got to find that balance. Yep, absolutely. Um, I still like going and, and taking some miles and yeah, it can't just go full out. Otherwise it's, uh, <laughs> well, it's the only bike I got right now. So yeah, I, yeah. If I had another bike, maybe, but all right. Um, and then. I guess aesthetic wise, I mean, you kind of kept it pretty, you did it the way I like it. It's not overly loud. You didn't do like some crazy paint job, nothing against crazy paint, but like you kind of kept it simple, like your parts shine through it really like showcases and you you brought it together really well. Well, It all mixes. It's not like a bunch of crazy flashy parts that just don't like meld together. It kind of, it definitely came together well. So did you, did you kind of have a plan for that early on or were you just making sure you had the right components and kind of letting it fall into place with like colors and that no, kind of well, thank you, by the way. Um, but no, I, I had a, like a vision. Um, so I started putting this together last winter um, and, and I had a vision of what I wanted it to look like. Um, so, I, I, you know, like I said, I, I knew it. I wanted the stance. I, know I wanted the, the suspension. Um, I wanted some carbon. You know, I like the carbon like mohawk look, mm -hmm. you know, okay. it, 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 and it works with, the, with the, the, the paint. I'm not a flashy guy when it comes to the paint. I don't like, you know, if you like, you know, if you, you like a big, uh, flashy paint job, you know, that's, I will, I'll not knock you. Um, but that's just not me. And, um, so I do like the subtleness of the, of the gray and you don't see a ton of like the flat denim out there. Um, you know, I, it, it just, I don't know, it works with, for me. And, and I actually had a street glide before this that was gray okay. and then I wanted a road glide. And then as soon as I came out with the gray road glide, I was like, Soul, done. Soul. No, I think it works well, and like I like, I like it when the paint doesn't overpower everything else you have going on, and so the paint looks nice and it like obviously adds to the bike with a solid color, but then you still notice like your carbon wheels, your regimented brembos, your swing arm, all your little red accents. Like you kind of still notice all that, and you're not just distracted by all uh, like the craziness kind of going on. Yeah, it definitely. But it definitely highlights like the 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 cool the cool parts, the cool guy stuff, you know, but in it's uh but no it, yeah absolutely cool all right so i have a starting point i want to do on this because this is actually probably because i know you've ran foot controls which is a kind of a weird place to start <laughs> but it's kind of i'm still running forwards or reg, like regular four bagger forwards on mine mm -hmm. and i had a dyno that had the further forwards on it and so i've been wanting to go to mids and trying to decide kind of how i'm going to do that and I know you've got like the boosted brad mids now but you've also ran what the Arlen S, their mids, yep. and then obviously the full boards as well. So kind of walk us through like obviously all the different things you ran, like what you started with and what you've changed it to. And I kind of like to walk through maybe somewhat of a comparison of the each like position yeah. and like that kind of deal. So I mean with the with the the floorboards, I um I had flow floorboards on there. And you know, they they work, they they do it's kind of like it goes back to like the starter kit, you know what I mean? Like that seems to be because they're not a bad product for what mm -hmm. they are, right? Um, so I would I started off with those, ended up when I was riding, especially like in the twisties or down here, you know, I want to have my feet farther back on the the board. So I found myself with my feet all the way back, and then so if you're in a turn or and then you need to shift gears, you know, you're moving your foot forward and, and it just becomes kind of cumbersome and and uh too many moving parts. Um, and then I had a shorty HPI, not the mid HPI. So that's, and I kind of wanted to go mids, but I ended up getting, the, I had the shorty HPI first. Um, and then when Ness came out with those, I was like, well, this could be a good solution. I can keep that pipe and yet still have a mid function. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they work good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, they, are definitely a little more they're more forward than the these mids um and they're also a little lower okay um i would have to say they they might be a hair higher than like where the back of a floorboard would actually be okay um because last year i had those on here when i was down here for the v2 and visionary mm -hmm. and i was scraping them all over the place okay so they're definitely not as 
high as a, you know your traditional so mid style. You're getting, you're getting a little closer to mid. It's probably like kind of the back of the floorboards, but you don't get quite the ground clearance. Right. I guess. Yep. Yeah, and I think it's good for people who have you know an, an HPI pipe, a shorty pipe, or you know uh, another another brand that has that you know the rear pipe that goes there, and you don't want to go and spend the money for another you know mid control pipe. Um, it's definitely a good alternative. It might be good for guys that are really tall. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm not so. Yeah. It's, uh, but there was nothing wrong with them. And in fact, if I didn't come into this pipe, I would probably still, still have those on there. So you mentioned you still scraped them a lot. Did you notice, you may not, depending on how many miles you put on your floorboards, did you notice if you scraped them more or less than the floorboards or about the same or? So I scraped them, it's, I would scrape with the floorboards, I was getting into the actual mounts. Okay. So, you know, you wouldn't hear the aluminum make that noise. It would be like a, a yeah. dig in. And so that's why I definitely wanted to get rid of floorboards because okay. I was digging into the actual physical mounts of them. Okay. So I was not getting into the mounts of the, the, the Nessas, but I definitely was getting into the boards. Okay. You were still getting into them. Yeah. Like you still had more ground clearance, but you were, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that definitely. Sense. Yep. And then now obviously you've, uh, I guess with the new pipe on the boost of brass. So the actual true mid control. So how do you like those compared to the Arlen S ones? So I, I love, I love them. Um, I think that traditional mid mid, you know, is a, is awesome. It fits me. Um, it's definitely where I want, you know, my feet to be so I can, when I'm getting on the bike, I can push with my feet and in the turns. Um, it, it, they, they feel great, you know, and Boosted Brad makes a great product. Um, his floorboards are perfect uh and you know the pipe works great with them and in fact i think that pipe might actually be you know made specifically for those um but i don't know that's you'd have to they go well i mean it looks it, like it fits yeah, perfectly it, it kind definitely of it's a nice shape i definitely like i like hpi's shape with their mid control pipe and it's a gr and it's a great pipe too okay. it's and so obviously with running the full mids you get a lot better like control and be able to like use your feet and the pressure and like cornering and stuff like that and so you, I think you've had these for a little bit now. And so with tripping on them, have you noticed a big drawback with going full mids with tripping on them, that kind of deal? So I haven't, um, you know, I like to, like I said, I like to have my feet back anyway. And I took them off, my passenger pegs off, uh, because I, I actually, with the mids set up like this, I don't use them as much. With floorboards or even with the nest mids, I would, you know, on long trips, I'd need to stretch and move. So I would put my feet on the rear pegs, um, but I, I'm super comfortable on, on with these. And if I want to stretch out, I can, you know, put my feet out on the crash, on bar. the crash bars. Okay. Um, but I, I, you can stand up on them, you know, and there's no, I don't see a drawback in them, honestly. Okay. It's way more control, way more function. Um, I think they shift crisper than, mm -hmm. than the other styles that I've had. Um, but definitely highly recommend the way to go. Okay. Yeah. When I, when I hopped on it today, that was my first big thing. I was like, cause I was thinking I want to go to like more of a mids, but I was thinking I was going to go to Arlen S because the Dyna I had had the further forwards and the Arlen S mids looked mm -hmm. like they were more in that position. And so I was thinking I would go with that and kind of be a good like uh balance or compromise between yeah. like full on mids or like floorboards or whatever. But that actually was, I mean, I didn't ride it very far, but just the, the distance I rode actually felt pretty comfortable. I didn't see any reason why I couldn't go for no, distances. absolutely um, not. You know, it's just, it, you're hindered by the whatever pipe that you're running, right? I don't, you know, um, that's the only thing is, and I think that's a big drawback for a lot of anything people, with mids, right? Yeah. You know, especially with the pipes nowadays, they're, you know, they're, they're super nice, but they're expensive. So people want them and they end up waiting all this time for them and they get them and then you realize, oh, hey, I want mids. And then, so now you're in a predicament, but I just got lucky with that pipe. I came across that pipe and, and it just kind of worked out, so. Okay. Well, I guess since we've been talking about mids, we've been talking about this pipe a lot. So you're running an HPI initially, right? Yeah, yep. And I had an HPI shorty, yep. And then you've switched over to the mid one. So um, I guess super happy with the HPI pipe. What drew you to that one initially? That kind of I just like, I'm a Midwest kid anyway. Yeah. And, you know, they're a Midwest guy, but maybe a couple hours, two and a half hours from, mm -hmm. from where I live. Um, but they just, you know, I think they make great looking products, uh, you know, and, and like I said, this pipe's great. I have their their uh, throttle body and intake, mm -hmm. their air cleaner. Um, it just works. It's worked well with my bike, with the motor. Uh, I, I don't have any issues with it. And, and like I said, it's it's a you know that intake is it's a shame that it gets covered up because it's <laughs> really it's beautiful. It, yeah, yeah. It, and they do great work. Um, and, and everyone who I've talked to there has been super friendly and awesome and great to deal with. Yeah, um, I've talked to 
a few of the guys up there, and they're all nice. They obviously they obviously know what they're doing with some of their bills yep. and the numbers they put out. I filmed something with like Thundermax up there a couple of years ago. They were building Mills House's bike, and like they cranked out something producing like insane numbers. And their pipes look amazing. They've set some of the best looking pipes, and they from right around to the, all day today, they sound freaking ridiculous. Yeah, so. it, it's a great sound. Like it's not overly loud when you're riding. But when you want to wick on it a little bit, you know it's there, yeah. you know? Cool. Well, since we're in there, you already mentioned, like, obviously, um, air cleaning the intake and all the HPI. Kind of walk us through everything you've done motor-wise to this thing. So it's a Fuel Moto 128. Um, it's, you know, I didn't go anything crazy. I just have a 475 uh, SMS cam, um, SMS cam plate, oil pump. Um, but that's it. There's no head work to it. it it's just a kind of, I wanted something that had power, but was also reliable. Mm -hmm. I do like where that 475 cam puts me as far as in my power, the okay. power band. Um, I like to ride a little bit higher up in there anyway. And where that kicks in, it and it fits good. You know, it did good on a dyno, which dynos don't matter, but it, it did good numbers. It's not overly overpowered to where if I'm in a turn, a curve and I'm, I'm coming through it and I wanna get on the throttle, I don't have to worry about, you know, getting too loose because I got too much horse. Um, yeah, it's it's just a it's kind of just your standard run. Hey, big bore kit, yeah. um, but it, it it does well. Okay, no, I think from riding it a little bit mm -hmm. today, like I thought it was it was like it was great enough power to be fun, but it wasn't so much. It wasn't usable. Yeah, right. Um, it was, yeah, it's not jerky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it would definitely like smoke mine. So I mean, one hundred percent. I think you did a good job meeting that balance, especially. So how, so you've got almost fifty. How many miles are on the completed motor? Uh, see, I did that last year, so probably 15,000 okay. on that one. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it, solid and everything. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I had, I had a little head gasket issue and it, okay. it turned out it wasn't a head gasket. The, the stock head actually had a slight warp to it. Okay. Um, got that taken care of and, but there was nothing wrong with the, with the kit. Okay. So no, no issues. No, no, nothing major. You know? Nice. Sweet. All right, well, uh, let's jump with some of your other stuff. I know you mentioned first thing you were trying to do was get this thing off the ground and lift it some with like better suspension and everything. So kind of walk us through your setup, like suspension um, front and rear. So I got Olin's in the front and back. Okay. Um, and what I did is I actually sent my forks uh, to uh, suspension by Smarty. Okay. And he set up my my front, my front end. Um, I all oh, super nice guy. So if anyone's actually thinking about it and you're kind of not a hundred percent sure I've tinkered with some of the, you know, compression and things like that here and there, but the initial setup, I, I sent it to him. Awesome dude to deal with. He did a great job on it and it ran and did exactly what I wanted it to do from him, yep. you know, and I've just slowly adjusted, made tiny adjustments, mm -hmm. but not honestly, not much. Dude, like, that was the first thing I noticed today when I rode your bike was your front end is like, it's there, dude. Yeah, oh. it, it's it, it's awesome. It's the, it's super tight. And I think between the the um, Olin's in there and the, with the fork brace, everything just is kind of tight. Um, and it just, yeah, it just feels good. And it's, you know, with the wheels being lighter, it just, everything just feels kind of put together tight. And yeah, I would a thousand percent agree with that. So how does that work, I guess, when, because I've seen a lot of people use him. Um, for stuff. Yeah. So is, do you tell him what you want to run and kind of like tell him your riding style weight and all that stuff and he does the rest or how does that process work? With yeah. Him? So like he's, I called him up, not knowing anything about him. Super nice. I mean, we probably talked the first time we talked, we probably talked for 50 minutes and we maybe talked for five minutes about what I wanted to do to the bike. The other 45 minutes was just bullshit. Okay. Nice. Just about bikes and, and, um, you know, he super honest guy um very straightforward on what he wants to do and hey i'll do this and that and and doesn't uh doesn't try to like price gouge it or anything okay. crazy and so what i did is i took my stock front end shipped it to him uh and he does all the tubes or what have you the internals um if you want to do you know and he'll, he's i've seen him do inverted tubes he, he'll do everything he's done he'll do his own paint work um, okay. one buddy of mine had his lowers get painted blue okay um so but yeah, and then he ships them back to you and, and they're ready to rip. You can install them and, and really they're, I would say they're just as good going in from him as, as what I'm doing tinkering with them, you know? Okay, nice. So highly recommend. Yeah, I, I would. If you're not 100% sure, if you're not a good suspension guy, because it's that's a, 
it's a hard thing to do, you know? I mean, that's a big deal. Like, I've been trying to, Kyle and Steve, mm-hmm. like, forever ever, ever, helping me try to get mine dialed in recently. And, I mean, that's a big part, having that, like, set up to yeah. where you really have confidence, especially in your front end when you're, like, diving into corners pretty hard and that Absolutely. kind of deal. So, um, what are you overall? Like, are you just, are you plus two or what overall, like, hype? So, it should be, I think it's plus two and a half. Okay. Um, so, I'm plus two and a half in the front. Um, and then I got thir- uh, the Owens, thir- their 13s plus the one-inch spacer. Okay. And then with the swing arm, I got it on the plus two setting. Okay. Um, so, I don't know exactly what the total amount is. Um, but if you go off of that, you're, you're looking at, what, 15, 16 inches. Okay. Um, so that's a good bit over because stock is, well, the stock shocks are 12 inches. I think stock sure. is, stock's yeah. 12, and then, you know, a lot of people do the space, the one-inch spacers. Yep. Um, is that or, the little Krauss spacers or whatever? Yep, yeah, okay. Krauss or, you know, I think Big Bear made, made okay. some. Um, my, my shocks were 13, and then with the one-inch spacer, they were 14, 14 and a quarter with the adjustment. Okay. Um, so they're still 14 and a quarter. I just got them, you know, cranked up to the plus two setting. Yeah. It's definitely taller, and, uh, you know, I'm, kind of on my tiptoes on it. Um, but it, I feel, I definitely feel it, it handles better. It wants to fall over easier in the corners. You know what I mean? And, and it definitely, it's nice. Yeah. You're from right now, you're tipping and like you're turning, like mm-hmm. this thing feels like super nimble. I guess we have set up some of that's probably due to you. You're running like carbon wheels as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. The BST carbon wheels are, are, uh, awesome. They huge difference. I think I saved, nine nine and a half pounds per wheel mm-hmm. just on the on the wheels alone and all that unsprung weight a rotational mass it yep. just it's such a people don't really think about that but it's it was night and day difference when i put them on the acceleration even my braking and then like you said tipping it in or just weaving in it just it wants to go yeah that was uh that was something i considered very briefly when i was building mine and the price point i was like yeah no like yeah. But now, after I've ridden this, I'm kind of regretting my decision. <laughs> like, I love my wheels. I got, like, the bill of aluminum. I love the way they look and everything. But um, they're bill of aluminum, so they ain't light. Right. And after riding this thing, like, I, it might have been, like, worth it to, like, invest in some carbon wheels. Because, yeah. Yeah, they're definitely they're definitely on the pricey side. But, you know, it's there's a lot of – I think a lot of people, they hear bad things about it because they think carbon fiber and it's flimsy. But you know, you get with you. Know, I got them through Brox, and if you talk, you know, Brox will put them. They've got videos out there where they've dropped something on the wheel, and the wheel will actually flex and then come back. Okay. You know, if you do that to an, uh, an aluminum wheel, it'll dent, and yeah. then you'll lose your air pressure. Um, I haven't done it. I haven't yeah. done that yet. So <laughs> yeah, because I know you hear people like worried about like hitting potholes and like yeah. um, that kind of deal and like messing them up. So how many how many miles do you have on the wheels? Do you know? Oh, there's not many on them on the wheels. I, okay. I just got them last year. Uh, so well, I mean, you rode around here today, and here's Pothole City. So I, you yeah, have no issues today. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you're probably pretty good. Um, all right. So since we're down here, um, you obviously went to radio mounted brakes. Um, run us through your brake setup and your rotors and. That whole deal. Yeah, so I got 13 inch uh, Galfers. Um, I had the 11 and 0.8s and, and they were did fine, but I wanted something a little bit bigger. Um, so I went with 13s and then I got the uh, the, the monoblock Brembos and um, awesome, awesome upgrade. Uh, it's definitely a, a radial mount is is where it's at. They look great, um, but they they do function. It's a huge improvement. Yeah, it's definitely. Better, but, uh, so what's your I guess what's your caliper mount for your front end? So that caliper mount is actually from Fuel Moto. Okay. Um, yeah, they, they were selling a little kit, and I, I liked how it was kind of open. Mm-hmm. You know, some of the the ones that are mounted, you know, they, they kind of it's a solid block where you know, and I kind of like the fact that you could see the the brake rotor through. Yeah, it winds up looking like you got a big mass there, but yeah, yeah it still yep. keeps it open there. Yeah, yeah it, it's not it's it, it you know, and it does exactly what I need it to do. You know, I've never had any problems with it. You know, braking, flexing, or doing anything like that. It's it's a solid solid piece. Solid piece. Yep. Sweet. And then you've got the was it Krauss hanger back there? Yeah. So uh, the Krauss hanger, I originally had that because I had the stock swing arm. Mm-hmm. Um, so if anyone's looking at it and, and sees, oh, he's got a cross that'll work with a Brox, it won't. Um, we had to machine the back of the brake stay, take a little bit off of it because we actually had some interference issues. Okay. Um, there's other uh, caliper mounts that will like go up and over the top, which is probably yeah. what I should have done, but was able to make it work. Didn't take too much off the brake stay to, to make it too flimsy. Um, and it's it, a... Uh, uh, 
yeah, it, it works. So <laughs> I'm not going to complain. Yeah. And we're back there. Welcome to uh, the Brock swing arm. They make, they make two swing arms. They make a performance one and like a West Coast one. Yeah. So the performance uh, one is like, I guess that's the basically the mounting shot, the mounting points for the shocks are either angled backwards for the performance one and okay. the West Coast ones, they're angled forward. So okay. I believe it's the West Coast one, which is what I have, is you have to run if you're doing a higher shock, right? Yeah, if you want to run higher shock, you you know, you want the West Coast one. I think the performance one is like a, a stock mount and then minus one, minus two. And this is stock plus one plus two. Okay. Um so I know some people, my one buddy's been burned. He, he got a West Coast one, or a, a performance one and it wasn't what he wanted, you know? Yeah. But great. honestly, I've never had I, that swing arm, huge improvement. You know, it's tons lighter than the stock one. Um, and then I put the alloy art bushings in there. Okay. Yeah. And it's it Solid. made a super improvement. Yeah. Yep. I'm a, I'm a big believer in swing arm. I think I ordered the initial one I did for the Dyna. It was definitely more for looks, but when you get it on there, obviously, Huge amount of weight savings. Yeah. Or, or most of them have a huge amount of weight savings. And then like that extra rigidity it adds back there um, adds like a little extra stable. And stuff Absolutely. Too. And, and Brock's is a, like a local company. They're out of Ohio. So, you know, I like supporting, you know, local companies that, you know, they make a great product. And, you know, I have, you know, I got my BST through them, the swing arm. I, you know, I got no complaints. They, uh, top quality stuff, if you ask me. But nice. Very nice. Sweet. You oh ripping on four fours? Okay, we can talk about that. <laughs> no, it, it oh. <clears throat> All right. So we have a question from the crowd, <laughs> i.e., Emma Nichols. Uh, ripping on forty fours. Where yeah. did that come from? So forty four is the number that I've used. You know, I, I still use it on on like super stuff like emails and, and points but, covers yeah points <laughs> covers derby covers um which they're awesome by the way uh so it was a it was a jersey number that i used and then it's just something that i've carried throughout um the ripping on four fours is kind of a take on uh, that mike jones song yeah. Tipping on four fours. okay uh, yeah. yeah still tipping and so if you know you know you know what i mean but uh it was just i don't know something Something kind of stupid that worked. <laughs> Something kind of stupid. Yeah. It winds up sticking. It there. was funny. You there know? you go, man. But right. yeah, it works out. You know. <laughs> but that's 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 what the ripping on four satisfactory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, shoot. You mentioned uh, your points curve and your points cover and your derby cover. Uh, so those are. Like it's custom special as well. I can see those. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to butcher his last name because I, I don't quite remember it off the top of my head, but that's that Pete Dregs. Dre Dregs. Dregs. Yeah. Um, awesome guy. He, he's super solid dude. Um, and I reached out to him about doing something like that, and the dude was more than willing to help me out and, and did some things that, you know, he probably shouldn't have, you know, to, to, and but awesome dude as far as, like, you know, I wanted to do uh, – I was just going to do a machined um, – you know, no like design or anything yeah, like yeah. that. And I told, I seen something, I think I seen one of the clean motos guys where they had like the, the little ridges mm -hmm. inside. And I sent him that, I was like, hey dude, how much is this? And and he he threw it in there. So when I said he's doing something, he's, you know, not supposed to, he, you know, he, he could have charged me for that, but super awesome dude. Like, you know, we still kind of bullshit every now and then on, on Instagram, but uh, awesome dude, you know, if you want to do something custom, I do do nails uh, every time. That's a th I'm thousand percent going to get with him whenever I get around to doing my motor work because oh, I want to yeah. like there's a bunch of little touches like that I want to finish off on the bike. Um, and I feel like so many people I've done bikes with have have his stuff and it all looks great. Um, so yeah, it looks pretty awesome. Yeah, a big a big B would look pretty good, pretty good on the. Yeah, I got I got some logos yeah, I can put on know. there and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll get there. Um, all those little detail stuff, yep. like details it takes, matter. It takes time. I'm getting <laughs> there, dude. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, walk us through. We talked a little bit about ergonomic with your with your uh, foot controls. Like walk us through your setup with like your bars, your height, pullback, all that setup, and like seat that kind of deal. All my stuff is my machinist. Um, top trees, my machinist. Risers are my machinist. Um, I I like Justin's products. He makes good stuff. I had ten inch risers and. Um, the non stabilizer top tree. Okay. Um, I also had his his regular gauge mount as well, um, but I wanted to just kind of tighten up the front end. I for me, I felt like the ten inch bars were a little too tall. Mm -hmm. um, 
they they're really not you know it's only two inches um but when he came out with these risers i, I was like man i dig those and uh those are some, those are some of his more re recent ones yeah like yeah. he just came out with those recently and i i was messaging him and i was like hey man what you know any chance you got those risers coming in? And he's like, I'm unboxing them right now. And I was like, take my money, <laughs> <You know? laughs> like send them out. And it was right before Daytona too. And he, he actually, he shipped them out to me like the next day and I got them nice. before Daytona. And, um, but I wanted to get my hands a little lower just for more control. You know, we talked earlier about like the race guys that had their hands low, yep. you know, and get that leverage. Yeah. It's just, it's definitely when I'm in, in the turns, I definitely feel better being down than I do up. Um, and you know the stabilizer helps out um you know in in daytona we did uh there was a little hood ride that mercenary guys put mm -hmm. on um and doing that at completely the speed limit <laughs> uh <laughs> that thing would uh you know i never had a front end wobble you know because that's what they're meant to do is as the front end loses some of the weight you know mm -hmm. it's supposed to help keep you stable okay. um that thing is so worth the upgrade over yeah the it definitely stuff. helped out yep that's one of those things I'm considering. So that's good to know. I feel like sometimes, especially you, I get a little extra wind from semis and stuff. Mm -hmm. I get a little bit of like, it wanting to walk kind of deal um, at like high speed, like what today when we were rolling through there. Um, I feel like I got a little bit of that a couple of times. So that's yeah. something I'm looking about upgrading to or adding on to whatever. Yeah. So. I mean, it definitely doesn't hurt, you know, for, for what it is and it, it can't hurt. Right. Um, you know, you don't feel it when you're doing like low speed stuff. Um, but it definitely, I will say there is a benefit to it when you're going faster, and especially in a straight line. Yeah. Um, and then I do have his uh, radio mount, Navi the mount, whatever. radio replacement. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I, you know, that's probably where Harley should have put him to begin with. It looks good. Um, yep. But yeah, it just kind of completes the the whole. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. That was the whole goal of mine was like cleaning all this up. Like, and this is what you've done as well. But like getting rid of all that in the cell, like the open tree, mm -hmm. and like. Moving, we're getting rid of a screen that I didn't really use. Kind of deal. I feel like it looks the front end looks so much cleaner that way. Right. Absolutely. No. Hundred percent. You know, like I would use the Navi, but I think I like there was times where I'd go in and I'd try to put in an address, and it was just it was, it was clunky and, and it was just difficult. And so you end up using your phone anyway. Well, I went up because I would compare it to Google a lot of times on my phone when I was the couple times I used it before I ripped it out. Uh, and it would have me going like crazy ways and like <laughs> yeah. into traffic and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I was like, I'll just stick with my Google. So eight inch pullbacks, uh, what bar are you running? So that's just a thrashing, uh, low bend bar. Uh, I, I, you know, I kind of wanted, I didn't want anything too far back on me. I wanted to kind of have an aggressive stance, um, and good hand placement. And then, uh, so that, that definitely does it for me. I didn't want, you know, uh, tall bars. Because I feel like that defeats the purpose of having the low risers. But, yep. And, and again, I'm not a tall guy, so um, having my bars higher kind of defeats the purpose of. of How tall are you for reference? So like five ten, five eleven. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, and then uh, ODI grips, and one of the best things that I've improved done this winter is put those RCS 19s on. Um, they are awesome. If anyone's looking at you know an RCS 19 or even the Behringers, you know. They're upgrading your reservoirs is big time. Should have been one of the first things I did when I did the radial mounts. Honestly, okay. it's they're just awesome. Not I barely have to squeeze the brake, and the amount of brake pressure that is applied, it's it's awesome. It's right. it really is. So do you have to do anything? This might be like an, a dumb, ignorant question, but like obviously you're upgrading to those like in terms of brake lines. You have to do anything different when you run those like in terms of brake lines. Yeah, you got, you got to run new brake lines, um, you know, and if, depending on if you got ABS or not an ABS or if you delete your ABS. But you know, just the standard brake lines you get like from Harley stuff work or there any kind of special so differences? I, you know, if the, the brake lines that I have actually coming off the, the uh, reservoirs are the, the stock brake lines. Okay, all right. We just kind of manipulated them a little bit to make them okay, to so work. Okay, so you can still run the same yeah, brake you, lines. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can still, you know, people, you know, I guess you're supposed to run braided line with some mm -hmm. of that stuff to make it stronger. Um, I went with core moto lines and they, I'm, I'm happy with them. You know, okay. they, I think they do a great job. Okay, nice. Um, so a question I've got for you, because I know I'm, I've had issues with this and I'm still having issues with this. I know mm -hmm. Kyle fixed most of mine, but like, you're running, still running stock housing with those hand controls. And I know like 
a lot of times with those, like especially aftermarket, more like racy hand controls, you have a lot of issues because they're not pushing switches they should in the housing and stuff like that yeah. for your brakes and your cruiser work and all that kind of stuff. So did y'all run into any major issues there? So the the brake light switch is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, and I can't take any of the credit for that. My buddy, Paul Schaller, um, he's actually a big help and, and a big reason why the bike looks the way it does. Um, you know, he's a good buddy of mine and he's had a, he's had a bike shop. He's ha actually had bikes in magazines before. Um, and he's just probably one of my better friends. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that, you know, either I don't have the tools for, or I don't have the skills for, I don't have the time for what have you. And I don't, I'm always a big proponent of supporting people that are your friends or supporting people that support you. And so I have no problem, you know, letting him do a lot of the work. So he did a lot of the work with those hand controls. Um, there is a ribbon cable inside there and he soldered the, uh, brake light switch to that. Okay. So a lot of people they'll either not run it at all, or they'll run it to the rear brake light. Okay. Um, but my front brake light works just fine. Okay. Yeah, because my my front brake light doesn't work at all. If I if I have to make sure I'm hitting hitting the rear and I hit the front, mm -hmm. otherwise there's no brake light. And then I've had to like tape off a little button in there um, that you press in so they like you know it's like for your for my cruise mm -hmm. to work kind of deal. Yep. But then my cruise doesn't cut off whenever I hit the brake. I actually have to hit the switch, and so I know there's a lot of st little stuff like that. So. That's pretty, pretty awesome. Y'all were able to actually work all that out. So. Yeah, it's uh, he's just a smart dude, just a jack of all trades. Kind of has got a machine shop, does does race car work. Um, just an awesome dude. Um, but he's it's that ribbon cable is not real big, and so you kind of have to be delicate with it. And uh, but yeah, he he knocked it out of the park. Nice. It's no complaints. That's you know, and if and if ever, anybody ever wants to get in contact with him, reach out to me because you know I he's awesome. Yeah. But. It looks great. I love the way they look, especially with like the different type of reservoirs. It's very like sport bike and racy looking. Yeah. It kind of goes with the whole flow of the bike as well. Um, cool. And then obviously your seat along with the whole ergonomic setup. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, so it's just a Sadman step up and I just did the gripper on the back. Um, I kind of like the LS stitching. Uh, I don't know. It, it just, to me, it flowed. I know there's uh, the, the tuck and roll stuff. Um, and I, I think that's probably more comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just like the way it looks, you know, and sometimes you sacrifice <laughs> a little yeah, bit I mean, of comfort for looks. And it's, it's a balance, 100%. You know? yeah. And I just did some uh, some custom like gray stitching on it just to, you know, be matchy matchy. I mean, it works. <laughs> it, it flows with the bike, which is a big thing. So I guess we're jumping over a little bit all over the place here, but we actually were, <laughs> we're talking about suspension earlier and you mentioned the fork brace and all that stuff, but we just didn't actually talk really about it. So, uh, it's fork brace and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I think I'm a big fan of a fork brace on an extended fork. You know, it maybe they work good on, on uh, a stock suspension, but I almost don't think you need it. But with the longer fork tube, um, you know, and I'm not a, yeah, that's not my thing, right? But I just feel like adding that extra length to it helps, you know, stiffen it up. And that's a Speed Kings, okay. um, I think it's a slim line fork brace. Okay, cool. Um, all right, we'll jump from that. Um, I guess we're getting to the point where we're getting to some of the, the finer detail kind of stuff. Um, walk us through, I guess, your carbon parts. And you've got front fender, dash, rear fender, that kind of deal. Walk us through all of those. So yeah, the, the front fender, dash, rear fender, and side covers are all Hoffman. Okay. Um, I, I like I said earlier, I kind of like that carbon mohawk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sounds dumb, but it's just, to me, I thought it looked good. It cleans it up. Um, you know, and there's obviously the carbon wheels, but it's, uh, no, just, you know, there was some weight savings, you know, and there's also some looks, you know, carbon's just kind of cool. Yeah, it's, it's definitely weight savings. Like, uh, I think I'd grab a like, carbon fender somewhere at some point, it's pretty light. And then like mine, I'm still running my stock fender, but all I did was like take the um, big thing off the bottom, but the tail lights yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, like the that. Little brace. Yeah, then yep. the fever cycle was like cleaned it up for me, filled in all the holes and repainted it. But it was, uh, you put it back on, I was like, man, this thing is pretty heavy. Maybe I should have done like the <laughs> carbon kind of deal. Um, yeah, that little brace on the back is people don't realize how heavy that little thing is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I got rid of that and like the little side pods whenever I did all, um, kind of cleaned it all up or whatever. Um, crash bar. Yeah. So that's Centuro Fab Works. Uh, you know, they do, I got them and their chachos. Uh, it's, it, I, to me, it's the best looking one out there. Uh, and, and it kind of just fit with, you know, the, the chacho look. Um, it just, 
you know, I don't want a big crash bar. And uh, some of the some of the crash bars have different bars and things going all over the place. Yeah. This is simple, and clean, um, and it you know it gets clean, the job done. Yeah. Clean and simple, man. That's, That's it, man. Clean go. and simple, dude. <laughs> you you know? get the little actually actually you got the little red piece, and you got a lot of little red chachos, like your rocker box little red accents, and like a, a couple of your bolts, and obviously the Brembo. Kind of how the red work in? How did you decide on that? Yeah, so I, I kind of the. The, the Brembo on the red is kind of what started it, or the, the Brembo, the red on the mm -hmm. Brembos, yeah, start, kind of started it. Um, and then I, I kind of worked into some red, uh, you know, spark plug wires. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of gave it, you know, I'm not a huge red fan, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, but it just kind of gave it a little bit of like sure? contrast. And yeah, right. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> and so this year, uh, this winter, you know, I was talking to Paul and, um, we, we kind of were running the idea of, of doing that rocker box spacer. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, let's, let's, you know, let's do a, let's do red. What do you think red? Um, he's like, yeah, man, I think it would look good. And uh, <laughs> with the red chachos, we actually, he had some red electrical tape. And uh -huh. we, we put some red electrical tape around all the bolts just to <laughs> stood back, looked <laughs> at yeah. see if you like. <laughs> and I was like, let's run it. Oh. And uh, I, I think it's, you know, I don't want to go too crazy on red. Um, I think you can overpower it. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you so, see red on the, you know, grips and bars and, and full foot controls. And I think it can be it's definitely a balance with yes. like accent colors. Yeah. And if you do it right, it's spot on, but it's very easy to like go too far. And then it starts looking like it starts looking tacky. Right. Um, but no, I think, I think it goes well. And I think red's a good color cause you got like this gray and then like, obviously like the pipes, you have a lot of this like kind of raw titanium black gray look and the red just gives yeah. it a little bit of pop. Kind yeah, it's you know, I like the chachos, they look good. I think I, I have a lot of the chachos around like the engine, mm -hmm. um, and then everything else is actually ARP. Okay, um, I you know, Ray RP is an, it's a nice looking bolt, you know, and I know some people like to all ARPs, all chachos. Uh, I kind of, I kind of dig the having the, the different look, um, you know, and then then when I'm working on the motor, you know, it's all just Allen keys, you know, I don't need a ton of yeah. stuff. It, um, it, I think it works because obviously you got the, a lot of the red accents on your motor and you got all those are in your motor, but then like on different parts of your frame or like then your foot controls or on your front end, you got like the ARP. And so yeah. I think it works the way you've done it. Yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> light, get light set it. Run through your lighting set. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got the Baja kit. Um, super bright. Uh, you know, there's, I, <laughs> you know, there's no, I get flashed all the time. It's, uh, you know, I know you could probably run the, the amber setting, the mm -hmm. amber lens. Um, but I just, it, I don't think it looks, I think it kind of, you know, the amber kind of clashes with the bike yeah, since yeah. there's nothing else on it, gold. I would agree. Um, but yeah, the white, the the clear setting, it's super bright. It's, yeah. uh, I forgot how, I haven't had somebody with them riding because I've got to run like the rigids from Clean Moto and I forgot how bright these like off-road lights are because yeah. I've had somebody behind me. Oh, um, and then coming back to last night, I was like, man. <laughs> yeah, it's it's legit the power of the sun. You know, I at riding at night, you know, I live on the country. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I'm coming home from work, you know, we do I get a lot of deer out there. And with those, I can see yeah. forever. Like especially like well, you're headed to the Smokies tomorrow, right? So they're gonna come in handy there. Yeah, abso absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then your was it the custom dynamics fillers in the back? Yep, custom dynamic fillers in the back. Um, awesome. They they uh they do a great job. They look good. Um, yeah, and no complaints there. It just um, nice and bright too, you know. It hey guys, want to take a second and talk about Speed Dealer Performance. You guys will remember Frank from an interview we did a few months back on his incredible FXR. Today specifically, I want to talk about their line of swing arms for FXR, Bagger, and Dyna. These things are incredibly well engineered and put together. Recently just had one installed in my Bagger. Huge improvement, not only in looks, but also in performance with added rigidity at the rear end and a lot of weight reduction. The swing arm is made from 6061 T6 aluminum. There's no weld, they're machining a solid piece. All the components are made of stainless steel. So you're reducing weight over the stock swing arm by 17 pounds. So a huge weight reduction. The axle is 4130 chrome molly tubing. You get oversized bearings up front, axle adjusters and safety wire. You also have race jacks, which is a super nice feature. 
You have three shock positions and you can run up to 14 inch shocks on the position that's furthest forward. You get a billet caliper mount, so it's machine, not welded. 25 millimeter axle hole, 108 millimeter bolt spread for your caliper. As you can see, these swing arms are a huge improvement, not only in looks, but also in performance. I'll include all the speed dealers information in the description below. If you got questions or anything like that, make sure you reach out to them, tell them I sent you. Let's get back to it. Duh. It's just super simple, you know, that's, that was kind of the thing. I wanted it clean, you know, nothing crazy. Um, and I, I think it's, at least, at least it does it for me, right? Dude, like this is, <clears throat> like when I see a bike, like the type of bikes I like, a lot of people may not be like drawn to something like this because it's not like super flashy, mm -hmm. but I think I've said clean and simple like a gazillion times in my 45-ish interviews or whatever. And that's, dude, that's what does it for me. And you've got like all the solid components and you brought it together really well. And it's not like overly flashy, but if you know anything about bikes and Harleys and performance and you're looking at them, like it takes two seconds on this bike to realize like, you built like quite the ripper and from riding it i know it actually is a ripper kind of deal so yeah dude <laughs> yeah um, i i thank you man i appreciate that it's uh it definitely you know it, it's it, like you said it's not the i don't i didn't never like the flashy stuff but it definitely gets it it gets it done you know and will i get lost in a lineup you know and a bunch of cars or a bunch of bikes parked you know at bike night sure but that's fine. I mean, you built it to ride it, <laughs> right? Not to show it, right? You know, KTFU, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but sweet man. So, uh, future plans for the bike? Yeah. So um, it's funny because we're talking about you know clean and simple. I've debated doing some paint, um, and I don't think I would ever do paint. Um, I would do like almost like Monty Roach's like pinstriping. Okay. Yeah. Um, something something like a, a gloss black and a silver um because like like i said i don't want to do a ton of red um but i don't know sometimes I, just having it clean and, and open and, and nothing nothing on it um you know there's battle scars on it and, and there's some other stuff that i'd have to do before i would you know i'd want to have a clean slate before i actually had somebody pinstripe it to, okay um but yeah there's uh um i've debated going inverted yeah. for a while um dude i'm um inverted like i guess i didn't know much about like ruby Fini when i started building mine or i would have like surely considered one of their was it the nexo front ends they have yeah. and i feel like they're a lot more budget friendly than some of like the old ones front ends you see mm -hmm. out there from kraus yeah. or big bear or whatever um but i've heard nothing but great things i know ramjet does a lot of them they they were singing their praises when i was out there kind of deal so. they look good too i mean oh, dude, if yeah. you, you didn't know any better you would think they're an Owens, you know, you just, there's no, you know, and I've never tested them, so I don't know. I've never mm -hmm. rode one, um, but I know I've definitely, I've talked to Kyle Birch about it before. Mm -hmm. um, me and you have kind of chatted a little bit about it, but it's definitely a, it's an interesting thing because like you said, it's like half the cost of a, of an Owen setup. Um, but I, I don't know. It's, I, I kind of want another bike. Um, maybe hold off on the inverted for yeah the yeah yeah because <laughs> this thing is already like it, it already rides freaking great it, dude, so, it yeah. does for for the benefit so i i talked to kyle about this you know i'm like hey what do you think about inverted front end over what over this and, and you know he said basically if i want to spend the coin you know let, we can do it um but if you have it set up right you know the the benefit that i would have on the inverted front end to be on and being on the street what i'm not gonna gain a bunch of you know what am i gonna gain time yeah you know so is it worth the eight grand that you're mm -hmm. gonna have or seven grand or what have you um and, and i and honestly and i do like the front end look of the the harleys yeah. with you know yeah. the lower front end i think it, it's a it's a nice look inverted is sweet um but yeah that's it's, it's It'll be something I always beat myself up over, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so another thing you mentioned earlier today was possibly some pinstriping on the wheels. Oh yeah, I definitely would like to do. I wanted to link up with uh, Roach in Daytona, but that place is such a madhouse. It's yeah. still busy there, and um, I, I kind of wanted to do like a red pinstripe around the outside of the wheel, just to give a little bit of contrast. I think I, I like that. And I feel like you see a lot of like, uh, especially like the high-end like race not race cars sports cars and stuff like mm -hmm. that 
running that it gives it like a really good nice look i think it, i think it would tie in well probably make the wheels pop a little bit too maybe. i think so i think that you know there's so much black in there between the mm -hmm. front end and the, the carbon wheels and the fender and all that i think it would just give it a nice little just a little like you know a little break up and make it kind of pop yeah. um yeah, yeah i think it'd be nice that's, I, I think that's you know um the, right. uh i have uh a dark horse compensator okay uh I'm just doing the Screaming Eagle like template clutch with 1275 springs and a trash basket. Um, and uh, I'm doing a, and I have a Baker grudge box. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah. We didn't even cover that. Good yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. It's, it's the, that Baker grudge box is awesome. Yeah. Um, bullet, it's bulletproof. I know just like everybody else, maybe not everybody else, but I blew up third gear mm -hmm. um, and not even in this motor. So, um, you know, and every time I've broken something, I've tried to replace it with something better. Um, I blew up my, my stock compensator. Uh, so I put a, you know, a man of war dark horse mm -hmm. comp in there and been, been awesome since. Nice. Um, Sweet. but yeah. Then, um, okay, that's the bike, but, um, plans for you in the future. I know we've talked a little bit the last few weeks about you possibly like getting on the track and trying stuff. Any plans <laughs> yeah. for that? Yeah. So, uh, some devil advocates out there have, you know, kind of <laughs> talked to me, uh, KZ Eliminator, Chris Zimlo. He, uh -huh. he was like, hey, the way you're setting that bike up, you know, are you going to do some track time? Um, you know, I did the whole, and I, I, you know, I don't want, man, I don't want to lay it. What if I lay it down, blah, blah, blah. And some of the things he said made a lot of sense. You know, it's the cleanest surface you're going to ride on. There's no, you know, that you don't have to worry about deer. You don't have to worry about cops. You don't have to worry about traffic. There's no intersections. Um, and then... You know, you're running the same the same lap track over and over and over again, um, and and just makes a lot of sense, you know. And he said, "Well, did you did you push it hard in, in Tennessee? Maybe. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, like I'm like, okay, so so I'm gonna you know I've talked to a couple guys about maybe borrowing a suit because um, there are some some specs you have to meet yeah uh, to do a track day, but I think. Hopefully, I'm shooting for sometime in June. Okay, nice. Um, I think I might have a track picked out yet, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but I think it'd be something that I would enjoy Fair. to do. I don't have any, I don't really think I'm going to race. I, I, I just don't have the time, you know. Yeah. My daughter's growing up and, and, you know, she's getting into more things. And, you know, between the job, family, and then taking trips and, and actually doing stuff like, you know. There's only so much time in the day. Yeah, you yeah. can only do so much. But I think, you know. It'd be like going on a good a good yeah. rip. You're def I think you should definitely do it, man, because you're definitely you're definitely fast. From riding with it today, you definitely got like some speed. I think you should get out there at least kind of see what you can do. I mean, it'll be yeah. fun if nothing else, right? If if I can just improve, you know, I just want to get better, you know. And if I can be a better rider, I don't have to be the fastest. I don't, you know, I, I know I'll never say I am, um, but if I can get better at riding, where if I can take a corner and feel more comfortable taking that corner as opposed to, you know not trying to get myself, you know, a class or, you know, I've even thought about going and taking a champ school, you know, yeah. um, just to, to do, you know, to get some, some track time and learn from people who are the best riders in yeah. the world. Um, make you a better rider regardless of what you do with you it. Know, yeah, absolutely. You know, you get a bike like this and you build them up and there's a lot of guys out there that got their performance bikes and, and you know, if you're just out there cruising around and not really trying to better yourself riding, you don't have to push it, but you just have to try to make yourself better. And, and you know, and I think by being a better rider, it makes it more fun, right? Like it's way more fun to go and ride the dragon and rip the shit out of it as opposed to going, I don't know if I can make that turn. Yeah. Then you know, like creep it down. Yeah, yeah. And so you, yeah, you put that self doubt in you. And if, as soon as you put that self doubt in you, you're done. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like anything else. If you prepare yourself and make yourself better, like you do that for your job, you do that for so many things Absolutely. in life. I mean, do the same thing for riding. Absolutely. Like, it's pretty simple. Yep. And I think that happens a lot, you know, especially with Harley guys, you know, they, they get up bike and, and um, you know, they don't try to make it better or improve or do low speed maneuverability drills. And, and you know, sometimes that stuff is, is beneficial. <laughs> and you cranked out today. <laughs> yeah. It just, I don't know. I enjoy riding. That, I guess that's what it all comes down to is, I like being on that, you know, and I like taking trips and I like ripping with my homies and, uh, it, um, that's just, that's, you know, when I get on this, there's no, I don't have any worries. You know, I, all my thoughts kind of just go away. It's me and the bike and the road and, and 
bikes are like they're forced meditation. You get on there and it just it you have to like draw your focus into like what you're doing, especially when you're pushing it harder. And yeah. it kind of like forces you to forget about all this other stuff. And so I, I don't know, for me, I feel like it's like kind of like a forced meditation or whatever. No, it's absolutely like you know, even my wife, she she knows, especially in the wintertime, you know. I'll get a little crankier if I'm not on the bike and I'll go out and if I take a bike ride, she's like, oh, you know, you need to ride the bike, <laughs> you know, go, you need to go for a bike ride and I'll come back from the bike ride. And it's like, ah, it just, but I, it's just, I don't know. I think it's just part of me. And, uh, you know, I, I, there's a lot of people out there that if that's how you feel, keep riding your motorcycles, you know what yeah. I mean? That's, that's where it's at. But yeah, quick story for you. He practices what he preached, talking earlier about low speed maneuvering, making yourself better. We were taking photos today, and so I had to walk to the spot to take some photos as he was like riding by, or whatever. <laughs> so it was a little bit of a walk back, and I'm a bigger dude, it takes me a while. So I get back, <laughs> this dude's in the parking lot practicing like low speed figure eights and shit. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was all open, right? And I'm like, well, I'll do some U turns and do some circles. And I, I don't do it, honestly, and honestly, I don't do that stuff as much as I should. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's always fun, you know? It, you can lean that thing a lot more than what you think you can, you know, and the bikes, the bikes will always outperform generally what how we do. ride, you know, especially yeah. on the street. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, I had a blast today. It was a great time. You know, so that was fun. I always like comparing myself cause I'm definitely not like the fastest person by any means, but I always like comparing myself to like people when riding. So we were riding today and ripping through there and leaning it over. And I saw like, I'm obviously slowing you down cause you're on my tail the whole time. <laughs> so it's nice to have you come through, but actually be able to follow you for a bit and like, Oh shit, he's like, like, cause we've got similar setups in terms of like height and all. Yeah. I was like, he's definitely over further than I am. So I definitely have a little more I can go. So it's nice to kind of like follow and like kind of learn a little bit from somebody else and that kind of deal. So yeah, there, there's so much little stupid stuff out there, you know, it's just, it's just fun. I enjoy it. And I think that's, I think it kind of becomes infectious, you know, you know, last year for V2 and Visionary, a bunch of, you know, we had a, a big group of guys and go rip the, you know, go rip the dragon and all that. And when we got done and got to the resort, you know, there was guys, they were hooting and hollering and slapping five and it's, and I'm, they've <laughs> rode the road before, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it was just, a, it was a blast. It was some of the most fun I've had on a motorcycle and it just, it was great. And, and that stuff is like almost camaraderie building. Oh, hundred you know? percent. I mean, and these aren't buddies of mine, a couple of them were that are local to me. Um, but you're talking guys in Iowa, Illinois, um, all over the place. And, you know, and, and, but we all have a common goal that we just, we like to rip our bikes. And if you build them like this, I I think that's how you should ride them. You know, rip I mean, the shit out of them. If you build it set up like this, you're going to want to rip the shit out of them. Like 1,000%. <laughs> like this thing felt great. I mean, you, oh. you, you get on and you want to like freaking like hammer it, dude. No, that's great. So, I'm, I'm glad you I'm glad you liked it, man. Yeah. It's, well, dude, thanks a ton for coming down. This has been one of my favorite bikes for a while. I know you said you find that hard to believe, but like <laughs> this is this is my thing. Like simple and clean. It's not over flashy, but you You've done all the right things to make it like a great ride, which is ultimately what it's about, it's about riding your bike. It's not about all the other crap that goes on. Right. So like, thanks a ton for making a trip down this week or the last day or two, riding around, letting me point camera in your face all day kind of deal. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely, dude. I appreciate it. And I thank you and thank Emma. I mean, you guys were awesome and, 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 and uh, you know, taking care of me and, and I, I enjoyed it. This is just stuff, even if we didn't do any of the photo stuff, just ripping around and, and yeah. you know hanging out. It was a good time. It was a great I, time. And you know, anytime you, yeah. you guys come up my way, you're more than welcome. I'm gonna hold you. Got a place to crash. I'm gonna hold you to that, man. Heck yeah. Um, we may. It might be straight roads. <laughs> whatever. But we'll we'll, well, uh, we'll can, find something. It'll be a little easier for me to keep up, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, same thing. Anytime, dude. Um. So for anybody watching, um, if they got questions for you or just want to like follow you or anything, kind of what you're doing. What's the best way for them to like follow you, reach out, contact you, that yep. kind of deal? Probably on my Instagram. It's uh, ripping on four fours. It's ripping underscore four uh, on underscore four four s. Um, and you know, reach out to me. I I I don't get a ton of people you know asking me like what bars are this, what are they? But you know, I'll have people you know I had a dude ask me the other day about the the um, Krause setup here on the back, mm -hmm. you know, because he's got the same thing. Well, now he's trying to do the same thing and yeah. running, well, this guy did it. Yeah. What the hell? Right. Yeah. So, you know, I'm always willing to, to talk to people, you know, it's, uh, cause it, I had questions at one point yeah. too. Right. hundred percent. Um, that's kind of what this is about to help people like with those kind of questions. Yeah. By all means, if you've got a question on like this video or any of my videos, the chances are somebody else has the same question. So 
like ask the question in the comments. I'll answer if I can answer it. If not, I'll ask Chris to jump on and answer yeah, for us. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks again, man. I, I appreciate it. Dude. Yeah. Anytime, dude. Like always, thanks for tuning in. I'll drop all of Chris's information below on um, links to Instagram, all that kind of stuff. If you want to like, make sure you're following along. Super solid dude. You got any questions for the bike, reach out to him, drop it in the comment. So everybody gets to see the answer and kind of how that's going. Um, if you want to support the channel, this takes a lot of work, time, effort, a lot of money. I've got a website out there with a little bit of merch, some t-shirts, some hats. I got a Patreon, like you want to see it keep going, keep supporting it. Got some awesome, <laughs> there you go. Um, I got some awesome sponsors, Thundermax, Get Lowered, Memphis Shades, Speed Dealer. Make sure you check all those guys out. Those are the big reason I'm able to keep doing these. Um, we'll be back. Peace. Oh uh, yeah, something. Wow, that was sad. Peace. <laughs> Who the fuck says peace? Peace. <laughs> <laughs>